I did it. I sold my Canon R3. I'll tell you why. Hey guys, my name is Chris, otherwise known as Chip X Hazard. I'm a photographer and videographer here in North Florida, and this has been my baby for a hot minute. For, I want to say a little over a year. I've owned it since it came out, and I just sold it. So I got to pack it up, and it's going to a different home. So first of all, let's just get the awkwardness out of the way. Like, no, it's not a bad camera. I have one con with it, but we'll get to that. But first of all, let's just, I mean, it's a beautiful camera. Canon did good on this one. I don't really have any gripes on design. The grip feels amazing. Obviously, the built-in grip feels great. The battery life on these things, three batteries will last you a full wedding. One will last you a whole two, three-hour shoot if you're just doing photos. Easy. Uh, I think two batteries for photo all day, three for video all day. Great battery life, no gripes there. EVF is huge. So if you have gripes or anything like that about maybe the R5 EVF or R6 EVF, the R3 has a huge EVF. I never really used the eye tracking thing. It's fun and it actually does work. And it's like a good idea. But when it came to actually using it in practice, I never really used it. I just figured, you know, the traditional tracking and autofocus in this camera definitely covers it and you don't actually really need it. The autofocus in this camera just R5 doesn't stand a chance. R6 Mark II gets things from this but speed wise this still smokes it it's it's the best autofocus you can get if you're looking at canon just saying flip out screen the first in a 1dx kind of style body for canon very welcomed it was one of the first ones with the multi interface shoe which canon doesn't really promote any of their products that are supposed to use it also, one of the first Canon cameras to have a dedicated photo video switch, which highly welcomed. Thank goodness they're starting to put it in all of their cameras. The R6 Mark II has it. And, you know, I will say the buttons on this camera are definitely better. They're not the best feeling buttons. Like, I like my A7R5 buttons a little bit better than this, but... They work and they, like the this record button on the back on the photo video switch, probably the best feeling button on the camera. But that's like, you know, Canon's known for ergonomics. Maybe not the best looking cameras, but ergonomic wise, they're probably some of the best feeling cameras that you can hold. Easy all day comfort, never gets sore. It doesn't poke you in any funky way. Your hands line up perfectly in the grooves. Never had a complaint with that. But I know I said one con. I just kind of came across the second one not thinking about it. But we'll knock that one out first. And that's the micro HDMI. Like, you have such a big camera body. You couldn't put a full HDMI in this thing. My A7R5 has a full HDMI there. Do you see that? It's half the size like you're telling me you couldn't fit a full hdmi in this thing like where did you run out of room i'm just just curious on that one but i will have to say it is more comfortable to hold than this this is still comfortable but if we're just talking about like overall ergonomics this wins second con which is Honestly, why I ended up swapping systems, and that's you pay $6,500 for this thing. So he's not cheap in any way, shape, or form. I think now there's like a discount, but I bought this brand new. There's no C-Log2 in this, and I don't understand why. Like, I don't get why Canon withholds all these log profiles 
from their users that are forking out thousands of dollars for their gear. Like, C-Log3, it's one of those good enough profiles to me, but it's definitely nowhere close to C-Log2. C-Log2 has a nice roll-off. The color reproduction is much better than C-Log3. It's not oversaturated or anything like that. The dynamic range is better. And you think for, right now anyways, the flagship camera that Canon has, that they would just put that in there. Like, there's nothing that's holding this camera back processor-wise. So just, what what gives? People are like, oh, but it's not it's not a cinema camera. Then why does it have 6K 60P RAW? Like, I just... Those things just don't make sense to me, and there's no logical answer that you can give me that it's not in here. It's not slow. It's the fastest camera they have. Like, obviously, for photo-wise, like, it's a beast. I mean, you got this thing that just... It just... It does sound good. It sounds great. Like... It does sound nice, but I just, I don't, you have all that speed. So it's not like it can't handle C-Log2. The sensor is stacked. It's backside illuminated. It's arguably one of their better sensors. Why can't I get C-Log2? Like it's just a software update. The R5 could handle it. The R5C could handle it. The R6 Mark II, for crying out loud, could handle C-Log2. Why don't you just give it to your users? It doesn't make any sense. They spend so much money on your equipment, and you hold back what would easily make people stay and match cameras. Like That's mainly what people would do, is just to match cameras. Matching C-Log3 to C-Log2 is honestly a little bit of a pain in the butt because they don't look the same. There's no same curve. There's a color shift in skin tones. Like it's almost like you're shooting with two different brands. So what I just, that is one thing that really frustrates me and makes absolutely no sense. Their cinema line and their photo line are almost like two different companies. And They, like, just don't talk to each other. Like, it doesn't make any sense, guys. Like, this is a photo-dedicated camera. It is the R5, A7R5, and it's dedicated for photos. But Sony does not hold back and not give it S-Log3 or S-Cinetone. And you know what? This is a $2,000 vlogger camera, the ZV-E1. This has S-Log3 and S-Cinetone. These very easily match with colors. I can throw the same exact LUT and they match right out of the gate. Piece of cake. This camera is more expensive than both of those. And I had a C70, which is $5,500. You would think that if you're spending over ten grand in cameras for them, that they would give you a profile that matches, not C-Log3 because I don't want to lose dynamic range after spending over $10,000 on cameras, you would think that they would just, here's a profile that gives you the most dynamic range out of the cameras, and because they're the most expensive cameras we have for you to buy, like, here you go, you can match them, no problem, and you get the best of the best. Nope. Not with Canon, that just, not here. And it's frustrating because C-Log2 colors are so good. And C-Log3 is not close to that. Don't care what you have to say. I feel like S-Log3 and s Cinetone colors are better than C-Log3. But C-Log2, I just feel like it's, it's up there, but it's only in the C70. That's so dumb. I will just say it. That's stupid. Like, I feel like Canon could just win over so many people by just, here's a free software update 
for your R5, R5C, R3, just for your higher end cameras, even then, here's C-Log2. Would solve such a big issue and what I feel is like a hole in their market, people would love it. People would buy it up. You would see sales go through the roof because now people can match their cameras and they just won't do it. And that's stupid. Was that too harsh? Goodbye to this beautiful camera. I am now a Sony guy. Sony gave me what I wanted. I don't hate Canon. I just feel like that's a very stupid move for how much money you spend. Just saying. Hopefully not just me. Thanks for coming to my hazardous thoughts. And I'll see you guys on the next one.